John Phillips, attorney for the family. Um, it's been a long two years. Uh, I obviously don't have much to say except for, for one thing, and that's I had a baby last night. And I looked at him, and I had made a promise to Ron that he would not be born in a world where there's no justice. These are the greatest parents. They're still parenting Jordan Davis, and it is my pleasure to represent them and introduce Lucia McBath and Ron Davis. Words cannot express our joy, but also our, our great sorrow. Because with the ver verdicts of all counts being guilty for Michael Dunn, we know that Jordan has received his justice. We know that Jordan's life and legacy will live on for others. But at the same time, we're very saddened by the life that Michael Dunn will continue to live. We are saddened for his family and for his friends and the community that will continue to suffer by his actions. But we are very grateful that justice has been served. Justice not only for Jordan, but justice for Trayvon. And justice for all the nameless faces and children and people that will never have a voice. And Ron and I are committed to giving our lives, to walking out Jordan's justice and Jordan's legacy. We're so grateful to the Jacksonville community that has continued to stand by us and support us these last two years. We could have not done this without your prayers and your support. And for those of you that we may never know, we may never see. Thank you for uplifting us in praying for justice for Jordan. I am <clears throat> so thankful at this moment. Uh, the Lord has given me peace throughout this whole retrial. And as I get on my knees at night, I would always pray just for peace, not the outcome, but just for peace, whatever the outcome would be. I wanted Jacksonville to be a shining example that you could have a jury made up of mostly white people, white men, and be an example to the rest of the world to stop the discriminatory practices stop discriminating, stop looking where we have to look at juries and say what the makeup of juries are. All across this nation, every time there's a trial between a victim that is black and someone that shot him that is white, the first thing we look at is what is the makeup of the jury. Is that black victim going to be represented? And hopefully this is a start where we don't have to look at the makeup of the jury anymore. All we can do is put on a case and look at the minds and the souls and the hearts of people, of human beings, not of skin color, but of human beings. We don't have to look at if it's the sheriff's department. Because I was telling my wife not long ago, it's not because someone is law enforcement or police. It's who wears the uniform. It's a job. Just like you have a job no matter what you do, you have good doctors and bad doctors. You have good teachers and bad teachers. You have good police and bad police. So if we're going to have protests against the uniform, make sure it's the person that's in the uniform. If people in Ferguson did wrong, then let's protest against the bad cops in Ferguson. I'm sure there are some good cops that are being hurt by this whole experience. I want to give my heart and my prayers to all the mothers and fathers out there that have lost children. That got no justice. And they hang their heads every day and they speak about their child and they wear buttons and they wear wristbands 
and they wear pictures of their lost loved ones and they cry because no one listens to them and I get emails and I read each and every one of them I get text messages I, I read each and every one of them I don't have secretaries I read each and every one of them they cry out say Mr. Davis just want to tell you about my son just want to tell you about my daughter they found her in a ditch you know the Lynette Roebucks of the world, you know, the Oscar Grants of the world, where Uncle Bobby has to go and struggle and try to make people understand how much he loved his child. And I just want to say, we must in America do a better job of loving each other. We don't do a good enough job. The world looks at us and they look up to us. Everybody tries to come over to America. Everybody tries to get a visa to come to America. And I was so disappointed over the last few years how we're acting in America. And I just wanted to say, since I have the time to say it, I'm glad today that we can see something positive in America, that we can report on the news something positive tonight, tomorrow morning. We can talk about maybe this is a start here in Florida and maybe it'll go around the world that Let's do the right thing. Let's make sure that the decision that we make in a courtroom is based on witness testimony and the facts of the case and not of biases that we may have for one another. I just thank you all for supporting us in Jacksonville. You have all in the media have supported our family. JSO, that the police department has supported our family continuously and people from around this great country have supported Ron Davis, Jordan Davis, Lucy McBath, they have supported us from day one. And I hope you support the other families that need your support, you know. And lastly, I just want to thank Sabrina Fulton for coming on the first day. She has been like a sister to me. I want to thank for the Circle of Fathers, for Trayvon Martin's foundation, for gathering the fathers together, teaching us that even if we're disappointed in the court decisions, that we don't go out and we don't riot. We don't go out and tear other people's property up. What we do is stand as soldiers, stand as great men, and be a shining light to let people know that we can handle adversity and there's different ways to handle it without making an embarrassment of yourself. And I stand here as a soldier for Jordan. Thank you. No questions, thank you. <clears throat>